of all, uh, good afternoon. Buonasera. My apologies for not speaking Italian. I am, I'm not learning fast enough for that, and I would like to respect this beautiful Italian language uh, by uh, protecting it. So uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to have this discussion with you, with all of you, and I would like to thank you for coming to the Athens Open. This is a, a plant that we uh, visited several times. Uh, I would like to tell you that um, it's an iconic plant for us. And this morning we had a very detailed review of the performance of the plant, both in quality and cost. And uh, what I can see is that the plant is progressing uh, very well. There are always things that we can do better, but the, the base of progress of this plant in quality and cost is meeting the expectations of Stellantis and it was a very rewarding visit that we had this morning. So I just would like to tell you that uh, we, are, we are very happy. As you know, in this plant uh, we are manufacturing the X250 full-size van and we are exporting more than 85% of the production. So it's important that you understand that this is a very important plant for Italy, as we are exporting 85% of the production. It's also very important that uh, uh, you understand that if we are making so many different brands in this, uh, in this plant, is because of the power of 70s and because of the fact that the quality that is manufactured in this plant is meeting the expectations of the different brand CEOs. So quality is uh, very, very important and it is meeting our expectations here in this plant. As you know, uh, we have uh, in, uh, in Italy a very uh, important uh, market share in uh, LCVs more than 45% market share in LCVs in Italy. So we are the dominant player for the light commercial vehicle sales in this market. But even more important, you need to know that our market share in the electrified vehicles uh, in Italy is above 47%. So 47% plus market share in electrified vehicles and 45% plus market share in a light commercial vehicle. So Stellantis is very strong in Italy, both in a LCV market share and in a LCV electrified vehicles in this, this market. This is to say that everything we are doing here is for us of the utmost importance. Uh, we believe that the plant is moving in the right direction. This plant is creating a significant wealth for Italy, as we are exporting more than 85% of the production. And we are making here many different brands, thanks to the power of Stellantis. And uh, this is uh, what I would like to share with you. I would like to ask Jean-Philippe Imparato, who is the Executive Vice President in charge of the commercial vehicle business for the world of Stellantis. I would like to give him the floor so that he will give you some more details about our business. Jean-Philippe, please. Grazie, Carlos. Uh, buon pomeriggio. Benvenuti. So che avete fatto alcuni di voi sei ore di treno per raggiungere la testa. Questo mi fa assolutamente piacere, ovviamente, questo pomeriggio. Cosa posso aggiungere a quello che ha detto Carlos? Un anno fa, Carlos mi ha chiamato per dirmi Jean Philippe, tu vivi a Torino dal 2021, voglio vederti creare la Stellantis Pro One Organization col prodotto a Torino, Luca Morengo, con Paolo Aratessa, per saltare sul campo di battaglia e andare sulla la battaglia del LCV mondiale e del VAN mondiale. Abbiamo, fin abbiamo finito l'anno 2023 con un 1.800.000 macchine vendute prodotte nel mondo. Questo è Stellantis Pro One. Attesa fa parte di questa squadra. 
entro meno di quattro settimane la Tesla lancia nel mondo quattro macchine Opel, Peugeot, Citroën, Fiat Ducato che rappresentano la gran parte dei 30% dei vani del mondo che fanno la posizione di Stellantis Pro One assolutamente fantastica Carlos ha parlato di 46% di quota in Italia posso aggiungere qualcosa in questa Italia Ducato da solo fa 30% del segmento del Vergeplan e se aggiungo Ducato Box Argento Movami facciamo 45% del segmento la Fiat da sola in Italia fa 26% di market share il secondo è a 13 e la Tessa fa parte di questa squadra entro 4 settimane partiamo sulla nuova gamma di X250 che esporterai in 75 paesi nel mondo quindi a Tessa come punto di riferimento per me come benchmark per esportare dall'Italia nel mondo è una realtà e ovviamente fa parte della Stellantis Pro One Organization grazie a te Carlos Thank you, thank you very much Jean-Philippe for giving us those important details. I think it's time to go for the Q&A. So I'll let you manage the Q&A. I know you have lots of questions to ask. Thanks a lot, Mr. Tavares. Uh, allora adesso andiamo con la sessione delle domande. Vi chiedo solo la cortesia di alzare la mano. Chi vi ha dato un microfono e dire ovviamente il nome della testata che rappresentate ha ottenuto il vostro nome. Alberto Tullo, uh, Regional Branch of RAI, State Television. Uh, what are Stellantis' plans for the Atlestas plans, meaning uh, production targets, investments, and uh, occupational targets in the next five to ten years? Thank you. The future of the Atlestas plant is bright. As we are progressing in quality, Uh, I would like to give you one number that um, pays tribute to the expertise and the high quality of our people in this plant. Only one number. Over the last two years, the quality that has been made in this plant has been multiplied by seven. The quality has been improved by a factor of seven times better than two years ago. Uh, at the same time, the cost to produce an X250 in this plant has been improved significantly, which means that thanks to this performance, thanks to the efforts of our employees in the Atessa plant, the future of this plant is bright. This year, uh, the production will be significant, and uh, we will not be very far from saturating the full potential of the plant in 2024 and uh, I would like to say this in a way which is very simple at Stellantis we believe that only performance protects and at Stellantis when we improve the cost and we improve the quality the future is always bright and it is the case for for the Atessa plant and I would like to take this opportunity because you give me this opportunity through your question to congratulate and warmly thank all the employees of the Atessa plant. I think they are doing a great job. Uh, we can always progress because uh, we always have new ideas and we, we know that our customers are very demanding. Our customers want even better quality and a lower price, so we never stop working for our customers. But it is a fact through the measurements that we have done that over the last Two years this plant has made tremendous progress and I would like to pay tribute to our employees they have done a great job in cost and quality so the future of this plant is bright thank you abbiamo anche qualche giornalista collegato in teams quindi che mi stanno sentendo se vogliono fare domande possono alzare la mano e possiamo aprire il microfono Right. 
Grazie Raffaele Gomezzardi, con la tua fede business. Uh, with with uh, seven brands, uh, six brands of Stellantis involved in the, in the X250 uh, uh, platform, are you considering some kind of specialization or focusing on some business? Maybe in the way Fiat Professional uh, Ducato is uh, recognized as the choice, the right choice for uh, uh, camper van recreational vehicle. Maybe you, you, you are considering uh, other kind of specialization for the other brands? Ognuno, uh, each and every brand, uh, gioca la sua partita. Um, you have to know that in Germany, that's very clear. Germany is Mercedes and for campers, Ducato. That's it. That's life, my friend. And obviously we want an open in Germany that is double legit. So each and every brand with its CEO has a mission in the country. For example, Fiat in Italy is dominant, number one. Fiat in campers with Citroën is uh, in a right offensive. Opel is double digit in Germany. Citroën is number one in Spain. Peugeot is number one in France. That's the mission, for example, of each and every brand in the enlarged Europe region led by Uber. That's the mission of each and every brand. But nobody uh, uh, can prevent anybody to sell one car more, you understand, uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, field. But what we see as the matter of fact is based on the fact that the number one purchase reason for LCVs is loyalty. Everything depends on the quality of the customer experience we, pro we provide in the network. So what I see is that Fiat in Italy is doing the job. What I see is that uh, Opel in Germany is doing the right level of offensive. And Peugeot and Citroën are fighting in Spain and, and, uh, and France. And that's uh, adding value to our I would say, XCV business unit. So in this way, each and every one has a mission and each and every one is pushing for more business. Grazie. Abbiamo delle domande da Teams. La prima è Giulio Piovaccari di Reuters. Prego. Hello, Mr. Tavares and uh, Mr. Imparato. Sorry for not being in camera, but I ordered one and must be lost somewhere in the Red Sea, my whole earth. <laughs> no, quick question. Uh, you say that you in the statement that uh, that uh, you aim to be uh, LCD uh, market leader worldwide uh, with Stellantis. Uh, I understand that number one in the market is Ford, so how far in terms of uh, market share you are from uh, Ford and uh, what's the, um, the time range uh, when you plan to, to catch up with Ford? Thank you. Uh, first, you are right. Uh, you are right to, um, to say that we are looking for the leadership. Uh, when we look at uh, the places where we uh, have potential to improve, we see that basically uh, we are doing a good job uh, in, uh, in Europe. We are uh, growing our market share since uh, H2 uh, 2023. So uh, we are improving our market share. We know that in Africa Middle East we are also improving significantly our market share. We will continue to improve in uh, Latin America and we have still significant work to do in the US uh, with our brand brand. But um, I would like to uh, just share with you some good news. Uh, I think that 10 days ago I was in the US and I had the privilege of delivering the first ProMaster EV to our customer Amazon. As you know, the ProMaster EV is the same as the X250 EV version, and we have done a specific van version for Amazon with, as you know, a very demanding uh, customer from a logistic last mile delivery logistic perspective. And we have made specific engineering for specific features to enhance the efficiency and the effectiveness of the last mile delivery work of a company like Amazon and this product was very well received by our customer that considered that the features that have been developed for their specific needs are meeting their expectations and that was very good news so 
we expect to uh, now go on the offensive in the US market with our ProMaster EV, which by the way is the first EV product, pure EV product that we launch in the US market. So overall, very good progress in uh, Europe, Latin America and Africa Middle East. Still some work to do in the US, but starting. And of course, uh, a lot of opportunities in ASEAN that we still need to tackle. But you will hear more from us very soon on some other, um, I would say, uh, breakthrough initiatives that we are taking on this matter. And Jean-Philippe will communicate that uh, in due time. Of course, this is a very nice competition. We love it. We are racing. We'll see if uh, we can win this race. I think it's fair to say that uh, we need a few years. So let's just consider that this is going to be done within the time window of the Dare Forward 2030 plan. And we believe that within that time window, uh, we have the potential to win this race. This is the time window in which we are operating. Thank you for your questions. Oh, Albertina Tozzoli, Bloomberg, prego. Eh, domanda buongiorno, domanda per Carlos, Carlos mi hanno detto di farle una domanda in italiano, quindi provo a farle le domande in italiano, se per lei va bene. Allora, la prima, la prima è il gruppo Big Picture, eh, abbiamo visto nei mesi scorsi sette società, vedo una per esempio Volkswagen, ma Ford l'altro giorno, anche Tesla, per difficoltà nel loro, nei loro grandi ambiziosi piani di elettrificazione. Lei crede che sia solo un pump eh, di un periodo o crede che queste, um, questi momenti di difficoltà potrebbero fare molto più attivo? Il, il mondo futuro è il mondo IV o non IV per lei? E poi una do eh, seconda domanda su Italia, visto che lei oggi è in Italia, eh, già il ruolo di Atesmo, una fabbrica che io non conosco come vive lei posizionato a Tosca, mi chiedo scusa, non essendo presente in volte. E poi c'è stato un po' di mh, scandalo sui giornali su una lettera che Stellantis avrebbe mandato a, a dei fornitori italiani decantando il Marocco. Lei ha parlato spesso di paesi del nord e paesi del sud. L'Italia dov'è oggi? Sarà in, questo, in, questo, in questa sua visione del mondo, del suo futuro. Well, first of all, uh, it's very fine to uh, listen to your questions in Italia. <laughs> Feel free. Feel free. And secondly, thank you for asking that, uh, those two questions. I think they are linked. They, they are, uh, we could bundle the two questions to answer you. Uh, as, as you know well, because we, have, uh, we had the opportunity to discuss several times, the only remaining uh, problem for EV adoption is affordability. You know that uh, the problem that uh, we are facing today is that dogma is hitting uh, reality. And uh, we need to make sure that the electric vehicles are affordable for the middle classes. If the EVs are not affordable for the middle classes, then the impact on the planet will be limited because the volume of sales will be limited. So if we want to be sincere and have a positive impact in fixing the global warming issue, we need to sell EVs at a high volume hoping that they will be recharged with clean energy. And we can only sell EVs at a high volume if they are very affordable. We all know, and this is not new, that uh, the EV technology is 40% more expensive than the ICE technology. This is no news. We have been bragging this for the last six or seven years. Everybody knows this. So if we want to make the EVs affordable for our middle classes, we need to digest the 40% of additional cost of the EV technology against the IC. Whether we like it or not, this is the reality. This is the brutal reality. 
So how to make those vehicles affordable for the middle class? The only way is to absorb the 40% additional cost of the EV technology against, uh, against the, uh, the IC technology. So how do you absorb 40%? 40% of additional cost. What I can tell you is that for the Stellantis part, for the added value that we are doing in the Stellantis plants, including in Atessa, we are on our way to reduce our costs by 40%. So Stellantis is doing its fair share by reducing our transformation costs in our plants by 40%. We are on our way, thanks to the talent of our people, thanks to the quality of our management, thanks to the understanding of our employees, they get it. This is what we are doing. But of course, as you know, the cost structure of a vehicle is 85% uh, of parts that we buy from the suppliers, 10% that we do in our own plants, and 5% logistics. So each stakeholder needs to do his fair share to reduce the cost. So we are reducing by 40% our transformation costs in our plants. Our suppliers will have to reduce their own costs by 40% to contribute in the same proportion as the cost structure of an automobile to make the EV technology at the same price of the IC technology. This is the brutal reality that uh, we have been explaining to the world for the last six years. There is no news. So no surprise that some people discover today that uh, we need to reduce by 40% the cost of parts as much as 70s is reducing by 40% the transformation costs in our plants, and we are on our way to do that. Then the way, the way to reduce the 40% of the parts that we are buying for our vehicles is to be decided by the companies that are manufacturing those parts. It is their decision to find a way uh, to reduce their costs. And uh, of course, we are an open book to them. We are here to support and we can explain to them how we are doing the job in our workshops, how we are using the creativity of our people in our workshops to get the job done in our plants. We are very open to support them and to explain, but of course they have to do their fair share. And it's important. So when you ask me, is the electric vehicle technology the technology for the future? Uh, I will answer you three things. Number one, you have to make sure that you are using clean energy. If you are not using clean energy to recharge the batteries, then it's not going to be a very good deal for the environment. Number two, you need to make sure that uh, the electric vehicles are as affordable as the IC vehicles we just discussed. And number three, you need to make sure that there is enough convenience in the way we are using the EVs, which means a high density of charging network. Those are the three things that we need to do. I would add to this that as Europe is keeping the, um, the market open to the Chinese imports, we also need to face the Chinese competition. And the Chinese competition has a 30% competitive edge against the Western vehicles, which means we need to face the Chinese competition. Why? Because Europe is keeping the market wide open and to compete with the Chinese we have to make a significant cost reduction. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that uh, the Atessa plan needs uh, two things to be totally competitive uh, as we are exporting 85% of our production. The first thing we need is deep sea exports, which means we need access to the Mediterranean Sea with efficient railroad structure to access deep sea ports on the Mediterranean Sea to make sure that we can export in an efficient manner, cost competitive manner, the vehicles that we produce here in Atessa. So the first thing we need from Italy is 
an efficient infrastructure to bring our vans from the Akasa plant to the Mediterranean uh, Sea. And we need to have access to a deep sea port to export from Italy in an efficient manner. The second thing that we need from Italy is a much more cost competitive energy. The pricing that we have here in Italy on energy is by far not competitive. So we need a much more cost competitive energy and we need infrastructure to reach the Mediterranean Sea in a deep sea port to export our vehicles out of Italy. So those are two things that can contribute to the affordability of our banks all across Europe that of course would contribute to increase the EV adoption across, across the continent. This is what I can share with you. Thank you for your great question. Abbiamo ancora alcune domande, sì, adesso me l'avevano chiesto Alberto Tutto da Re, poi Bonora e poi velocemente anche gli altri colleghi. Prego Alberto. Ah, tu? Ah, no, scusa, va bene, va bene. Va bene, va bene. Sorry. Mister Provare, sono Amalia Angotti dell'Agenzia Anza, scusi se faccio la domanda in italiano. Eh, volevo chiedere, voi mi fate degli investimenti importanti come quello che fate qui ad Atessa e però continuano ad arrivare attacchi, polemiche dal mondo politico l'ultimo ieri l'accusa da parte della Premier di una sorta di disinteresse per l'Italia che cosa risponde su questo? First of all, please feel comfortable in asking me questions in Italian, you are in Italy so please feel very comfortable. It is my job to adapt to that. No problem at all. You know, um, we have uh, more than 40,000 employees in Italy. They are working very, very hard to adapt the company to a new reality that has been decided by the politicians. This new reality that has been decided by the politicians is putting our societies and our companies in a position that is deep and fast transformation. So the first thing I would like to say is uh, to pay respect and express my warm congratulations to our Italian Stellantis employees for the speed at which they are adapting to a new world for the depth of the transformation that we are doing in the company. So uh, I don't think that my Italian employees appreciate that comment. And I don't think I have to answer to that. I just pay my respect to my employees. They are great people. They are doing a transformation at a depth and a speed that no European country would be able to match. No European country would be able to match the speed and the magnitude at which our Italian teams are transforming their company to adapt a new, to a new reality. So I just want to pay my respect and thank warmly my employees for what they are doing for their company. Whatever criticism we receive, then so be it. You will be judging our results. You will be judging what we bring to the Italian society in terms of safe, clean and affordable mobility. We are here to serve. We are here to serve the Italian freedom of mobility with clean, safe and affordable mobility. This is the reason why we are here. And that's enough for me. I don't have to answer any other comment on this, on this problem. Thank you. Vi chiedo ancora due velocissime domande, perché okay. poi dobbiamo scappare. Mr. Tavares, uh, I would like to know if, if Stellantis is still committed to, committed to building the Thermolis Gina factory, and even eventually, how these two plants, Atessa and Thermoli, can uh, create an interplay between them, which adds value to the territory of Abruzzo and Molise. Thank you. What kind of value? Thank you. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, over the 
the time window of the DERF for 2030 plan. We are investing more than 40 billion euros in gigafactories around the world. Three of them are in Europe, and one of them is, as you said, in Thermoly, uh, which is a great opportunity for the transformation of Thermoly. And again, I would like to thank the employees of Stellantis in Thermoly for the efforts that they are going to make to transform their plant. This is one more example of uh, the thoughtful thinking of this company to transform itself, to adapt to a new reality. Very deep transformation, very fast transformation. What do we get from this? Criticism. So what we are doing is quite remarkable. What our employees are doing is quite remarkable. And it is quite clear that you will have synergies between Thermoly and, uh, and this plant, of course, at one point in time. Those synergies will happen because it is quite clear that in the current mandate from the European Union, this continent will be about selling EVs. That is what the European Union has decided. The European Union has decided to ban ICEs from 2035, which means that from 2035 we can only sell EVs which means that in this plant we are going to make EVs, which means that there will be, of course, an interaction between this plant and uh, thermal, of course. This is why we are doing it. For the good and for the future of thermal, and for the good and for the future of this plant. What do we get for it? Criticism. That is not fair to our employees, to our Italian employees. And again, I would like to thank them. They are excellent people doing an excellent job, which is very difficult. And I'm here to support them because they are bringing to this society freedom of mobility. Mobility that is safe, clean, and affordable. It's very difficult. We should support them. Thank you. Buongiorno a tutti, Luigi Bonola. Luigi Bonola del giornale. Tre domande rapidissime. Eh, il um, capo del Partito Popolare Europeo tedesco Weber proprio in queste ultime ore ha detto che se passa la maggioranza nuova in Parlamento Europeo e Commissione eh, nel 2035 rimarranno i motori endotermici e quindi con quel contrasto con quello che lui ha detto se dovesse succedere. La seconda, cosa ne pensa eh, della volontà del governo adesso quando presenterà il primo febbraio il piano di incentivi definitivo? che vogliono dare incentivi anche alle auto usate da Euro 6 in cambio della demolizione di vecchie automobili. L'ultima domanda, è, il governo italiano è, dà la caccia a un costruttore straniero da affiancare al gruppo Stellantis, beh c'è già la Borghini che è Audi, però ovviamente non ha la capacità che ha Stellantis. Lei cosa ne pensa di questa volontà? È una mission, una mission impossible o una mission possible? Se ne parla da anni, da decenni di questo, di portare un costruttore in Italia a investire. Se lei fosse capo di un'altra realtà, non questa qui, che farebbe? Grazie. Well, first of all, um, I think it is fair to say that um, Stellantis has been asking the Italian government for the last nine months to support EV cells in Italy for a very simple reason is that we have a plant called Mirafiori that is almost totally dedicated to EV manufacturing. For the last nine months, we are asking the Italian government to support the EV cells for the sake of protecting the Mirafiori plant that is making the Fiat 500e. It took five month, nine months to the Italian government to come up with what was announced today in terms of subsidies. Of course, we have lost a lot of volumes of Fiat 500e that we could have had manufactured in Mila Fiori over the last nine months had we had this subsidy sooner. And as you know well, Italy is uh, spending much less money than any other European, great European country to support the EVs, which is the choice of Italy which I respect. The consequence is that we are losing manufacturing products in Italy that we could manufacture 
at the moment where Italy would like to reach the bar of one million cars made in Italy. So we, if we want to make one million cars in Italy, and I, we have the capacity to make one million cars in Italy, we need to support the cars that are manufactured in Italy, namely in the Fiori, the Fiat 500e. But we have been asking for nine months that the Italian government bring subsidies to support the BVs that are made in Italy. Finally, it happened today, which is good, a good news, and I would like to thank the Italian government for that. That's good news. But we already wasted nine months of production, of additional production in Villa Fiori. So that's clear. Now, if the government wants to introduce a competition to uh, Stellantis in Italy, that's their call. We are ready for the fight. But of course, uh, if that fight was to be harsh, then you will look at the consequences of that fight. Uh, we are very, very eager to protect our manufacturing footprint in Italy. We feel good to be Italian. We feel good to support the mobility of the Italian people. We think we can bring safe, clean and affordable mobility. If the Italian government thinks it's better to bring competition to uh, uh, Stellantis in Italy, it's their call. I don't have to interfere. With that, I am ready to compete. And our Italian employees are ready to compete. And they will judge if that is a good decision for Italy or not. But uh, on our side, we are ready to compete. If the competition is very harsh, you will appreciate the consequences of that, of that competition. But we are absolutely fine. We are ready for the fight. Thank you. Abbiamo l'ultima domanda. Claudio? Mr. Tobias, good afternoon. Just a question about Opel Manta. Yesterday we read some news about the stop of the project, and I don't know if it's true or not, it's not my media, it's a French media. And more, more important for Italy is if Manta will still be produced in Memphi. And if I can, Claudio? Second question about uh, in February there will be a meeting in Rome with the government about uh, transition, uh, more help in buying electric car. I want to know if you will be at this table even after what Mrs. Meloni said yesterday or not. Thank you. That's it. First of all, I, I would like to uh, shortcut uh, the answer on your first topic to tell you that uh, the future of Melfi is not at risk. Whatever the number of products that we would do in that plant, the future of Melfi is not at risk. And this company will make any decision that uh, this company believes is needed to ensure the sustainability of the company. So that's what I want to answer to your first question. On the second question, our dialogue with the Italian government is lively and permanent. We are very, very fine uh, with the discussions with the Italian government. Uh, this being said, uh, you can count on us to put the brutal facts on the table. Uh, you can count on us to be straightforward, to explain what is the reality of this industry, to explain that what is asked this industry is a daunting transformation. And this daunting transformation, of course, is going to lead to many other transformations around our company. And you cannot ask us to adapt to this new reality and at the same time uh, expect that nothing will change around us. This is the reality that we are facing. So our company is transforming itself very quickly. And again, I have no other words than thank you and congratulations to my Italian employees. They are doing great. They are doing great. We can always do better, we can always do faster, but the level of transformation that they are doing is excellent. And therefore, our continuous dialogue with the Italian government will continue. We are totally open. And we are totally open to explain the reality of our industry. There is no demagogic comments on our side. We are just telling you that what the European Union has decided is that we have to absorb 
40% of additional cost of EVs against ICTs. So you cannot expect that we are going to absorb 40% of additional cost without any kind of change in our company and around our company. By the way, in addition to that, you can add that if uh, the European Union is eager to bring the Chinese car makers to the European market, we will face the Chinese car makers. We will face the Chinese car makers. But please, make sure that you understand the consequences of that. Make sure that you understand the consequences of bringing the Chinese car makers to the European market, knowing that the Chinese car makers are at 30% cost competitive edge against the Europeans. So do not expect that we stand still. Do not expect that uh, we promote the static quo in such a situation. We are going to move. We are moving. Our people are moving. Do not expect that things will continue to be as they were in the past. Because the conditions that are being created in Europe is for a significant change in the way we promote safe, clean and affordable mobility. So again, what is important for me today is to thank my Italian employees. They are doing great. And frankly, I don't think that they appreciate unfair criticism. But please ask them. Thank you. Grazie a tutti, vi prego di rimanere seduti perché purtroppo questa parola si deve tornare velocemente a Torino, quindi eh, state, continuiamo la nostra conferenza e salutiamo questa parola, mi sembra che la cosa di marzo di questa parola sia... No, I just would like to thank you all. I, I... Thank you. I very much appreciate the fact that you came to see us here in Atessa. I know that you are going to visit the plant. Please, please, please congratulate my Disney employees, my Italian employees. Please congratulate them. They are doing a great job. And I'm very, very proud of them. And uh, this is what I would like to ask you. Please congratulate them. They are doing a great job. They are improving the quality seven times in two years. They are reducing cost. They are adapting to a new reality. And uh, I think they deserve your support and they deserve your congratulations. Thank you for coming.